I think we haven't had this setup for a while now, but it's time for another tutorial. What's up everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Tom and today I want to talk about Premiere Pro's Warp Stabilizer, which is definitely one of my favorite built-in tools of Premiere Pro. And it's really a powerful and useful effect you can use in a lot of situations. I'm sure a lot of you already used the effect because sometimes when you're in a run and gun shooting scenario you usually don't pay that much attention to your camera movements as you should. And even though it's really important to get the best footage out of your camera and get rid of as many shakes and micro jitters as possible while shooting, sometimes you end up with shaky footage like I did in a recent shoot where I shot a classical opera singer and the whole situation was a little bit stressful and I had to rush the shooting in like 20 minutes and I just didn't pay that much attention and then I ended up with some shaky footage. Before that specific project, when I used the warp stabilizer before, I usually just threw it onto the clip and left all the default settings, either it worked or not. But I didn't play around with the settings too much, honestly. But on this particular project, I did a little dive into the secrets of the warp stabilizer and I found some settings you might find useful and I just wanted to share them with you because this is all these tutorials are about that I usually do on my channel. It's not because I think that I'm super clever or something like that. It's mostly because I found out something that was new to me and I think there are people out there who don't know this too. So why not share it? But let's get straight into Premiere Pro and I already have a little short clip here which can show you how good the warp stabilizer actually is. So let's see how this clip looks without the warp stabilizer. It's not that shaky but it has all those ugly micro jitters and sometimes this can be the look you're looking for but on this project which is all about classic music and smoothness that didn't fit at all. So as usual I put the warp stabilizer onto the timeline and as you can see these are the default settings. The result is usually smooth motion and you can only choose between that and no motion at all which is kind of a tripod look. You can change the smoothness which simply means the intensity the warp stabilizer uses to get rid of all your shakes. You can change the method and this is pretty interesting because here we have four different options. The default one is always subspace warp, which means in general that the warp stabilizer changes the position, the scale, the rotation, the perspective, and it also does all of this in a different amount to different parts of the image. So in general, the warp stabilizer tries to recognize several objects and applies all its intern effects separately to all the objects. And this can work pretty good in wide shots where you have a constant movement all over your image but if you're in a clip like this where you have an object in the foreground and you have a blurred out background with several different objects on it the default settings of the warp stabilizer will look pretty strange like look at this look at how you get all these wobbly effects in the background this is just definitely not the look you want in a professional video edit. But there are a few things we can do about this. So in general, if you change the method of the warp stabilizer, it always takes away one, you can say, dimension of stabilizing. Like this is 4D stabilizing, 3D, 2D and 1D. And what I just did, I just tried out the position stabilizer. And let's see how it looks now. It definitely looks a lot better. You still get a little bit strange movements in the back, like with this object on the wall, but it's not this notable, like the strange wobbly effect we had with the subspace wall. There are also some other things you can change in the advanced settings, like you can turn on a detailed analysis which takes a lot more time 
but which gets a little bit deeper into your image. And you just have to decide whether this is worth it or not. You can also change the rolling shutter recognition and what is the most important of the advanced settings you can change the amount between crop less and smooth more. Because what the warp stabilizer does when stabilizing, it always crops in a little bit. And the more shaky your footage is, the more it will crop in. And as for the smoothness settings over here, you can now say, okay, I don't want that much crop, but then the results won't be that smooth. Or I want the results to be totally smooth, but then there will probably be a lot of crop. I for myself, I played around with this a little bit, but I would personally always let this set to 15% because in my opinion, this is just a good balance of crop and smoothness. But when you use the WAP stabilizer and you find that the default settings don't work for your footage that good, make sure to try out different methods. Like we could also go for position scale rotation and let's see whether this would even work a little bit better. Yeah, this also gives you a little bit of these strange movements in the back in here. I for myself, I definitely think if you have a lot of handheld movement and you have a lot of depth of field and objects in the foreground, objects in the background and everything is moving, then most of the time the position method is the best because it mainly makes sure that the object in the foreground is kind of moving smooth or as smooth as possible and doesn't play around with the background too much, which can often lead to a lot of strange looking results. As I said, for me, this is definitely one of the best built-in tools of Premiere Pro. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to use the Warp Stabilizer the next time, definitely make sure to try out different stabilizing methods. Like the video and subscribe to the channel for more filmmaking related videos like that. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.